we have nothing to fear but fear itself. I'm sure you probably have heard that saying. I remember hearing it when I was really young, and I didn't know what it meant, but it seemed that all the adults knew what it meant. And I wanted to figure out where it came from. And I did find out later because it was said by a former president of the United States, um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And he said it at an inaugural address that he was giving in 1933. So it was well before I was ever born. Even my parents would have been even quite young at that time when they would have heard it. But somehow the adults seemed to know what he meant. And I wanted to know the context of why he said it then. It was because he was coming into office at a time where there was this, the Great Depression. So everybody was in a lot of fear. And somehow he knew something that others may not have understood. But he, he knew that the faith that people could bring about could possibly cause some sort of change. That's what that's that's really what he, he meant. He didn't want people to freak out because of what was going on in the world. And you have to understand too, we had finished a world war before, and this is this is before the second world war. So there was a lot of energy going on in the world. And when those kinds of conditions are happening, we can become even more afraid than usual because there are things that are changing in the world. Similar to what is occurring now, which is why you might be very afraid as well. So when I wanted to take that a bit further, though, what did everyone mean about that? And many people started to think that what he was talking about is death. That is the one thing that we're all afraid of. Am I going to die? <laughs> and that's a real concern. I, I know because I've experienced close to becoming death at certain times in my life through an accident or things like that. So we do think about that. What happens if we were to die? And that is the thing that most of us are really afraid of. Then many years later, I came across an interview with Dr. Eben Alexander. He was on the Oprah show. He was a neurosurgeon and he was um, talking about when he went into a coma and he was dead, clinically dead. But when he came back, he had a very different experience of life. But he wasn't really afraid. He had, he had gone through that fear. And then I started seeing so many others who had done something similar, who had had near-death experiences, and they come back and they tell us a very different story. That it wasn't terrible. They, they weren't afraid there. They were more afraid in life than what they were, when they were in death. That's really kind of surprising. Then later on, I found something else too, a video by Will Smith, the actor Will Smith. He was talking about going on this trip for, to go skydiving. And at first he said, I'm going to do this. And he was really excited about it. He's with all of his friends. And then he started to think about it. Because why would I do that? And see, he could die. <laughs> That's what he thought. He could possibly die if he were to jump out of that plane. And he does this beautiful description of what that entire experience was like. I mean, lying in bed before this, thinking, how can I get out of this? <laughs> Maybe I can just not show up and I won't have to jump. Then something else happened. He got there. Not because he wanted to. He just felt like he had this obligation. And he described the fear even and jumping out of that plane. But then once he jumped, it was the most blissful thing he had ever done. And so then he had to question, why was he afraid beforehand? Why did he waste all of that time of his life being afraid with n when nothing was going to happen? Why do we all do that? Eben Alexander and so many other people who have died have told us that's never what's going on. There was another woman too, and this came up and this made so much more sense. And for some reason, it started to tie all of the stories together. And it was this wonderful woman, Anita Morjani, who basically had died as well. She was in a coma for so long. And then she, but she wanted to talk about it. 
And then she wrote a book called Dying to Be Me. And I was so grateful for hearing her story as well because uh, she was introduced to me by Dr. Wayne Dyer. He was another mentor that I really loved and followed for uh, so long. And he was so impressed with her story and he wanted her to share it because he knew that it would help so many others. Because again, that greatest fear that we have is of death that we're going to not be here and what's going to happen or where we're going to go after we leave our bodies. And we come to discover that while we're alive, we're still dealing with that fear all the time. Now we have to ask ourselves why. And why would we be experiencing so much fear right now in our world, in our lives? Because we are moving through something and it's energetic. And then we start to discover we are all energy and the way that we perceive or experience anything is through our consciousness and that we always have an ability to raise our consciousness to understand something on a greater level. And then we start to see, wait a minute, maybe we aren't just these physical bodies that are here. Maybe there's more to us. Maybe there is something we're meant to do in our lives that could cause us to become happy. Maybe there's something else that we could do. We were not stopped by fear. And this is something that's very common for all of us because we don't know where we're going. See, because when we come into the world, we have to figure that out. We have to go through and say, wait a minute, who am I? And we discover it has nothing to do with our parents, our friends, our, our, our family, whatever, whatever that is, our, our countries, nothing. It's this internal place that we come to that says, this is who I'm supposed to be. This is who I am. And as I start accessing that, I'm no longer afraid. And it is a process, though. And sometimes we have to die to get there. <laughs> we have to got, die to get there before we understand that which is exactly what Anita said. And I'm just so grateful for all the ones who have talked about this. Because what we're meant to do is to live these really great lives while we're here, while we're in this form. But we will have changes in our society and our civilization that cause us to have a lot more fear. But what I've come to understand is that, oh, wait a minute, fear is really uncomfortable. So how do I move beyond my fear? It's by becoming willing to jump out of the airplane. Because you discover that you don't really die. You just have this exhilarating experience. And then you start to live the life that you're supposed to have. And that's what I believe is happening right now in our world. We're being asked to discover and own who we are. Because that's an energetic choice that we will each make. And the more of us who decide to move through the fear and embrace who we are, then we start to put something quite different into our world and we start to live better lives ourselves and then we start to create a better world. See, this is what Franklin Delano Roosevelt was saying. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself because he knew that the mass of people were in this place of fear, but he also understood because he obviously had a different level of consciousness or awareness that told him if more of us could understand that we don't die, that we have all, so much to offer, that we could change everything and we could even stop this great depression that was going on at the time. We could actually do that with everything. But this period in the world is the most dynamic time that we have ever moved through, which is why it looks a little crazy. But what you start to understand is that the things that are causing you to become afraid or experiencing fear are the very same things that will awaken you to who you are, your authentic self. And the surprising thing that happens then, you stop being afraid. That's what happens. Just understand you are moving through something so wonderful right now. And if you love who you are, you will live this really, really great life. Now, I'd love to invite you to a free community called the Ascension Circle. I'm going to continue to put in information that's going to help uplift our spirits, give you more information and encouragement, enlightenment, and love. That is what the community is about, and I would love for you to join. See you soon.